Welcome to the Board Wrap-Up Show. I'm your host, Sean Anderson, for Ponca City Public Schools. This is our monthly Board Wrap-Up Show with the Superintendent of Ponca City Public Schools, Shelly Arrett, where we go over this month's Board of Education meeting. And as we film this edition of the Board Wrap-Up Show, it is day two of the new school year, and Superintendent Shelly Arrett, uh, the school year getting off without a hitch. Without a hitch. We had a few minor baubles with um, air conditioning, but other than that, it was great, and those have been taken care of. So oh, Very good. Very good. Well, the board meeting, uh, Shelly Arrett described it before filming here today uh, as, uh, as, as a very smooth and a very routine meeting. You said it was one of the uh, smoothest Board of well, Education meetings you've had in your experience. it was just the most routine meeting that I've had. We had a few contracts that needed to be approved, and some of them were no cost to the district. When we have providers that come in and, and, and provide services, counseling services to our students, the sure. board just has to know who's going to be in our building, that kind of thing. So, yeah. um the most the most significant things that we discussed during the board meeting I shared a lot of information during the superintendent's report and then we in in executive session the board discussed our negotiations with our staff well and that's where we're going to start um, those two things will be the uh, the big topics of this edition of the board wrap-up show the superintendent's report and negotiations with staff and Shelley Arrett uh, big report. What was Pretty the focus? Pretty big report. We uh, focused on our spring 2019 Oklahoma State testing program scores and, and how we compared to the state. And uh, comparatively, we're right at with the state. We had some areas in which we were super successful. Fourth grade math, we were a huge percentage above the state. And at the junior high level, in all areas except seventh grade ELA, we kind of performed with the state. We were above the state average in both ELA, English language arts, and math. We haven't gotten the results back from our high school state testing because just our juniors do the state testing, ACT results. Mm -hmm. um, the state report card has not come out yet. We hear from the state that it should come out in November. Um, but what I do want to say is that it's hard to measure the success of our students on a one-day sit-down test. Right. So something that we do in the district to plan and drive our instruction, we do formative assessment to see where our students stand all along the school year. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. once a month, I meet with elementary principals and secondary principals, and we really look at our data and see where we need to focus and see where we need to enrich and where we need to remediate. So we shared that information, or I did. I shared that information with the board. And then I talked about some of the focus, some of the things that we were going to focus on for this year. Um, we have an academic pillar in the district that all students are prepared to live and work in a global society. And to measure our success has been difficult because the state keeps changing the cut scores and mm. the state tests that we have to take. And a couple of years ago, there was a change, and we think that, that it will remain constant with our state testing program. And there was a component developed for growth, and it shows how our students grow each year they take the state test. Right. So that right. is going to be our target. Our target is to increase our growth percentages each year. And um, I shared our growth, our baseline data, um, where we were on our growth report card from actually the results of spring of 2018. And then I'll do a comparison and I'll share that on this report when we get our growth results, hopefully in November or December. Oh, fantastic. So some other data that I shared were um, information from our cultural pillars. We have an academic pillar, but we also developed some cultural pillars in 2017, 2018. And one of those was to reduce the number of teachers that we lose each year for reasons other than retirement or spouse transfer by 10%. And the reason for that cultural pillar is because of the severe teacher shortage crises sure. in Oklahoma. And when we first collected that data, we lost 44 teachers to reasons other than retirement or spouse transfer. Some of those things you just can't avoid. And sure. um, 
everyone knows that it's critical that we keep experience in the building and we don't want to turn over as much every single year. And we implemented some action strategies and our board was very supportive. We reduced our contract for one thing. We um, looked at other schools contract days and Ponca City was at the top with 185 days. We removed our con we we reduced our contract to 180 days without reduction in salary and and you know when you go into a service position when you know mm -hmm. that you're not going to earn a lot of money it's right. the little things that make a difference you oh, know yeah, just recognizing sure. your staff right. um, celebrating our staff uh, our board has been committed to um, pay raises and steps and stipends and um, that's made a big difference. Uh, we had a donor that gave us money. We all have team PCPS shirts right. and you know little things like that. Knowing their name makes a big difference and yeah. we worked with the, the principals on how to develop that culture and I'm pleased to report that when we collected that data in July of this year we had lost 11 fewer teachers. Wow. We went from 44 to 33. That's incredible. So that's 25% less for reasons other than retirement or spouse transfer. Right. Our other cultural issue, and, and we've talked a lot about this during the Wildcat Chat and during this show too, is that um, we want to develop a sense of belonging with our students, develop school pride, have them involved in extracurricular. Sure. Students do perform better in school right. if they are connected to the school. So um, you know that some of our action plans were that we all became Wildcats. Um, we did the spirit nights. We invited kids in right. um, to experience a basketball game, a football game, a concert, mm. whatever. They all have a t-shirt with a wildcat on it. They all know our school colors. And in fact, the reason I did this, I'd gone to Liberty Elementary and I talked to our practitioners. Why is it that our kids don't have a sense of belonging? And one teacher told me, they don't know they're the wildcats. And I'm like, what do you mean they don't know they are the wildcats? Right. They ask who the wildcats are. They are the Wildcats. We had done a March the Halls event where yes. we brought the band and right. the steppers right. and and football players, and this teacher had told them, the Wildcats are coming tomorrow, be sure and wear the school colors. And a, a first grader said, who are the Wildcats? Wow. And right then and there, that's going to change. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. all of our kids know that they are a Wildcat, Wildcat. Yeah. and what our school colors are. So I pulled some data, and I'll have to put my glasses on to see this data to get it accurate. accurate. I pulled the initial data in February of 2018. We had 1,175 of our 6th through 12th graders who participated in at least one extracurricular activity. That could have been a sport, uh, vocal instrumental music, a cheer, high steppers, mock trial, French club, sure. you name it, any mm -hmm. student council. 49% um, of our students, and that's pretty good. We wow. want 100% of our students sure. participating in at least one. After one year, and three months, I had the data pulled again at the on the last day of school of this last school year. We had increased the number of students participating by 485 students. So currently, wow, 74% of our students participate in at least one extracurricular activity. So that's great. If our kids are involved in yeah. a positive activity, right. that eliminates time for them to be involved in a negative activity, plus increases their academics. So that's incredible. And that's a wonderful, a wonderful measuring stick uh, for for that change and for those changes. It That's is, fantastic. it is. We want to bring our kids in uh, from the elementary level and let them be exposed to yeah. things they can participate yeah. in with Ponca City Public Schools. Well, another another thing that was uh, talked about during the superintendent's report and uh, has, has become very important and it is uh, very much part of being a Wildcat and that is the Wildcat way. And uh, Superintendent Eric, uh, the Wildcat Way. The wild yeah, cat please way. tell us all about it. Okay, so when we had our new logos, we mm -hmm. worked with a company and we have the new logos, big change, change to Wildcats. 
Uh, we also came up with something called the Wildcat Way. It was actually our former athletic director, uh, Jared Freeman, and it's characteristics to live by as a wildcat. And each characteristic starts with a letter of the word wildcat. And um, as you know, um, last year we began giving the Wildcat of the Way Award to a student at the high school. They don't have to be in sports. Right, right. They they just have in the classroom or in the personal in their personal life. If they exhibit the yeah. characteristics of the Wildcat Way, then we had some local patrons come together: Team Radio, sure. Dental Industry, Ground Round, and people nominate and actually Team Radio selects yeah. the Wildcat of the Week. Right. Mr. Dobeck go and I go up, interrupt learning, make a big fuss over it, right. give them their Wildcat of right. the Week t-shirt, uh, a ground round gift certificate, and we do this little quiz. Okay, let's say, what are the characteristics of the Wildcat Way? Yeah. Well, not a lot of our students knew them. And I'm like, okay, we've got to focus <laughs> right. on those characteristics. Right. I did it with our admin council at the end of the year, too, and they couldn't come up with it. And I'm like, now why is this? I thought, that's my fault. We're going to take care of this. So yeah. uh, we have developed this common language. W is work ethic and and. A strong work ethic can serve you well in all works of life. So, I is improve. We we just want to continually improve. And I realize you can't go from zero to 360 overnight, but it has to be a goal to continue to improve. Sure. And as an educator, if you think you have arrived, you're wrong. You will never arrive. We right. always strive for improvement. Sure. Leadership. It, we, we think all people can be a leader from our students to our staff to our community members set a good example be positive role models uh d discipline if you set your mind on something you be disciplined and meet those benchmarks to help you meet that goal compete um never accept losing we always want to compete um work harder try to get there attitude um, there's only two choices, and the right choice is to select a positive attitude, and yeah. you can turn um, a situation into a positive just by your attitude. Sure. And then finally, and one of the most important, is teamwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't get anywhere without your team. Yeah. So our principals over the summer, and I challenged them in May, start working ways to implement the Wildcat way into your site and they have come up with some amazing ideas they've they've changed up their school creed um they're doing assemblies with the wildcat way we're using that common language i was at the high school yesterday and saw a student l and leadership miss era you know so (laughs) i love uh, it i love it and it gives us good talking points even with discipline or making a point you know leadership you set an example. So that's our cultural focus uh, for this year. Our academic focus for this year is reading practice. And I'm not talking reading instruction. You think about what our most fundamental skill is, and that's reading. Sure. So um, there's a lot of research out there, and the research is that kids need to practice reading at least 15 minutes a day to see any growth. That's the tipping wow. point. Wow. And 30 to 60 minutes would be ideal, but the average student in the United States, seven minutes of reading practice a day. Now, huh. let me tell you something. Wow. If our national champion, Poha Steppers, practice seven minutes a day, I don't think they'd be the national, national champions. champions. Right. Uh, you know, they're in there at 6.30 and they work every single morning. Our football coaches wouldn't allow seven minutes of practice. So we are focusing on allowing our students to get that reading practice, not reading instruction, silent reading with supportive teachers, things they're interested in, and that's a doable task. So, um, So we are also focusing on our attendance rates this year. A new component of the state report card is chronic absenteeism. And you may have heard, and we put out a press release, we do have an attendance policy. There is a city ordinance in regard to attendance, and chronic absenteeism is missing 10% or more of the school year. Wow. So we have 160 instructional days. That means 
if you miss more than 16.7 days in a school th- year, you're chronically absent. Mm. I, I really like data, so I pulled the data from last year. Guess how many of our students, what percentage of our students missed 16, let's just say 17 days or more? Um, 5%. 20%. Ooh. 20%. Oh. And that's just oh, 17 days or more. Wow. So we're really focusing on attendance, and we've got steps for each absence, and they're not punitive. We never want to get to that. We want to right. we want to help our students get to school, work with our parents, right. and right. show them how important it is to be at school, that it does affect their child's wow. academics. Do you know missing just two days a month will get you into that chronic wow. absenteeism That's incredible. and you know you don't think that but it will yeah. I mean yeah. we're in school nine months and if you miss right. two days that's 18 over do, you, the limit. do you see more chronic absences in the in the in the lower grades or in, in the higher grades secondary what, secondary really secondary yeah. um, East West in the high school had the highest uh, chronic absenteeism rates mm-hmm. a suspension counts oh, okay. for um, okay. Uh, chronic toward chronic absenteeism and and we're not going to punish our students for that I mean if we impose a suspension and if they need to be suspended we will but we need them here as often as possible to get the most academic success and and I've told you this before the teacher makes the greatest impact and they need to be with their teacher well and I love it how the district is committed to working with students and working directly with parents to try to resolve uh, issues of chronic absenteeism, mm-hmm. and like you said, you want you want to exhaust mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. avenues to try to help that student mm-hmm. and try to help that family. And and some of the incentives have been remarkable in our community. I've told you this before. They just wrap their arms around us, whatever support sure. we need. Uh, our pie partners at um, Team Pep Wildcat Academy, a community national bank, brought a a gas card yesterday. And they just drew a name for a student that was wow. there and gave them a gas card. They're going to do that once a quarter. That's, That's an incentive, yeah. you know. So they're doing, we, we get great support from our community. Yeah. Well, one thing that has uh, been uh, a big topic, of course, cell phones. We That's all right. have devices. And the district uh, uh, decided and the board decided to make some changes to the cell phone policy. We did. It was needed, right? Um, I can't even tell you the number of issues that we have due to cell phone use and and, um, some issues that are pretty severe, plus students constantly checking their status, their social media accounts. That's just another distraction. And at East and West, our policy is um, they can bring their cell phones to school, but they are off and stowed during school time. They may get them out when they leave, um, go to a sport, touch base with their parents, whatever, but they will remain uh, stowed and off while they're at school. At the high school, we're going to go ahead and allow students to keep their cell phones and they can use those in the morning between classes at lunch, you know, gradually release some responsibility and that sure. building's so massive, um, yeah. it'd be hard to monitor. Right. Um, and But when they're in class, the expectation is that their cell phone is off and stowed. Yeah. And uh, yeah. hopefully, we, we can't reduce all problems that will happen with cell right. phones because right. a lot of things happen in the evening, sure. but we can, we can control it at school. And the result of that will be if they're caught with a cell phone, an administrator will take the cell phone and a parent or a guardian can pick that up. And then yeah. if it's abused um, frequently, it could mean banning the student's device from the premises. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, certainly uh, limiting and, and trying to manage distractions in the that's classroom. Right. I mean, that's it's, right. It's all about learning. And if that's getting in the way, then uh, mm-hmm. that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So. I'm sure you have. We've had a lot of questions from students and a lot of questions from parents and even staff. And uh, the support has been remarkable. Uh, With anything, you know, there's going to be two different opinions, but the support has been remarkable. Right. Fantastic. Negotiations. Yes. With staff. Um, What does that mean? 
Well, we have we negotiate with our teachers union. Okay. Uh, we don't negotiate with support, but we follow suit. Whatever we do with the teachers union, we follow suit with our support. Okay. And um, as you know, there was legislation not this last session, but the previous session where teachers got an average $6,100 raise. Schools got more state aid to help cover that. Well, again, our legislature are really going above and beyond to strive to make education a top priority. So again, they approved a pay raise for our teachers, a minimum of $1,220, and we got some additional money back into the formula to help with resources. And here's what I will tell you about Ponca City Public Schools. The money has been managed very well fiscally the last several years. Resources aren't an issue with us, and plus our community is so good to us with bond elections. Our students have the best facilities to prosper with their academics and their extracurricular um, activities. Uh, so resources aren't a big thing for us. We got about a million dollars more back into the formula, Good. and we are pushing that all to raises. The state did not provide a raise for support this year, but right. our board, I recommended and our board took action that our support staff get a raise too. Now, it was required that we give 1220 to the base, to our teachers. We gave 1600 to the base, which makes us the top district around by the way nice nice (laughs) and um plus a step and the step is the additional amount that you receive each time you've completed a year's service with the district and then um our support employees our 10-month support employees now we have 12 months who work all year right but on average the state provided the 1250 last year nothing this year so with their raise in the step this year for 10 month will be about $750. So 1250, 750, 2000 over the last two years for our support. And they are an integral part of our district. So, and and teachers too. And we do a lot of, we ask for a lot of qualitative data from our teachers and some of the things that they said that kept them retained with Ponca City Public Schools is our professional development that we offered. The support from administration and the board, continued pay raises, things like reduction of the contract. The support from the community was a big thing too. So just trying to change that culture and we've had some success. Our data shows that and we'll continually strive to improve yeah so how does uh, how does that uh, affect the recruitment i mean you know when you say the highest paying district around oh that's gonna you that's can gonna help bet we're going to have a beautiful graphic and <laughs> right, it will right. help with yeah. recruitment Certainly. and um you know we we tell our new teachers that come here you are important and valued we're going to know your name yeah. um we're the highest paid district in the area, our right. board supports you. We are going to give you all the support that you need to be successful. And as you right. know, we have a lot of emergency certified teachers yeah. and I appreciate them for stepping up so that all of our classrooms are filled. Right. This is because of the teacher shortage, but um, they weren't educationally trained. So we're working on things like management and mm. procedures mm-hmm. and things like that. So yeah. All right, very good. Well, there you go. That's the board wrap-up show. And every month you can catch this show and uh, you can get some um, some pretty deep and interesting insight into the Board of Education meeting. Our thanks to Superintendent Shelley Errett, as always. And thank you for watching. Until next time, for Punk City Public Schools, I'm your host, Sean Anderson. This has been the board wrap-up show. Thanks for watching. <laughs>